Hi there, I'm James. Welcome to the worst videos on YouTube. Today's video is part one. It's a series of videos that I'm doing on how I uh, design and build a uh, scale RC model. In this case, this is going to be my latest creation, which is a fairly large model of a Super Tucano. It's fully scale, highly detailed and flies like a dream. So let's go on the journey. Okay, here we go. The problem with this mold is that when you put the two halves together, then when you want to join them, you've got a problem. I can only join up to this much in the front, which is about maybe a foot and a half in, cannot get to the back at all. And uh, unless I cut big holes in the mold, which I'm not willing to do, we're going to have to basically uh, do it in four parts. In other words, front, back, and uh, that's the only way we're going to do it. That way we're going to have total access to put the joining tape when we do the joint. So I'm going to split this mold right now. All right, that's one uh, half split, so we'll split them, take them apart, and cut them out, get them ready. We'll do the same to the other side, and then we'll look at prepping all the molds. Okay, we uh, have all the screws out, so now it's time to just split them. Keyways still look good, everything. Put them over. We'll check them out. And uh, yeah, that's right. I remember now I waxed these uh, a couple of weeks ago. So these are ready just to be uh, vacuumed off, polished off a little bit more. And then we're going to go to the next step, which is applying the PVA. All right, seeing these are all waxed, let's just get some uh, some of the blue uh, pet shop towel. Make sure there's uh, no dust on. When we start spraying, the last thing we want is little dust particles in our uh, underneath our, I should say, underneath our PVA. And as you can see, because I did these molds uh, a few weeks ago. I was prepping the with wax, they uh, have gathered a little bit of dust. So we'll give uh, a little vacuum with my trusty vacuum, my remote. Those little polish up, make sure there's not a little bits of uh, hard wax left in them from the last time. And we'll go from there. One of the things I want to do with my videos is show the tools, supplies, tricks, things you do, you know, make things better. A lot of videos just don't show this. In the image, you can see a shot vac. This is just simply screw to the wall, bunch of, uh, I think it's two and a half inch uh, PVC pipe. Goes right in through the wall into my shop. Works great. In the shop, I have a fitting, in this case, I believe I 3D printed it, and it goes to a 25 foot hose. And from this, I can control everything with the remote that I showed you previously. Okay, at this stage, what we're gonna do is put some blue tape around the uh, parting plane. I'm gonna hang it over the edge a little bit so we can get a nice clean cut. And this will uh, stop uh, epoxy from getting onto the mold, which ends up having to be cleaned off. So the, for the sake of a couple of bucks in uh, masking tape, I think it's well worth just doing it and be done with it because I'm going to uh, pre-color these molds with a uh, grey primer 
There's a lot of curves here, so I'm not going to try and uh, mask around them. What I'm going to do is show you right now what I do. So I take a fresh X-Acto knife, I mean a blade, <laughs> well, X-Acto knife for the fresh blade, I should say. I'm now just going on a slight angle, gently, run along the contours of the mold. And there we go. So we now do that all around the mold. Make sure everything's messed up. Be good to go. About five minutes later, we have this thing done. Just make sure that you don't let any tape go onto the uh, the aircraft side of the mold. In other words, you know, leave it on the parting plane but don't let it go below the parting plane on those edges because that will uh, cause a bad joint. Okay, while I was taping up this tail, <clears throat> I uh, realized that we're a little rocky. So I'm just going to make a quick fix and temporarily hot glue tack a couple of blocks to the end so that it's nice and solid. Because trying to lay up a mold when it's rocking back and forth is just a pain in the butt. All right, now I've just used some uh, compressed air to blow off uh, a lot of the dust because I've been working on some wings and doing a lot of sanding. I don't want to change my paper out because the epoxy is a real messy thing, so why waste some paper? So what I'm doing now is just wetting down the surface a little bit. It will help lock up any uh, surface dust, what might be in the grain as well. Now I'm just laying out all the uh, mold pieces. You'll also notice that uh, there's some brown tape on there. That's just some cheap packing paper, that uh, packing tape, I should say, that I uh, came across a few years back and got a whole carton for like five bucks. So rather than use the blue tape, which is like upwards of seven, eight, nine dollars a roll now, uh, I just use that. You can use anything you want. Here I'm now applying a very, very light coat of uh, PVA. I uh, do the first coat quite light. Then, you know, just a minute later, you can go back and start to apply slightly heavier coats. You don't want to blast it on like you would, you know, spraying a car or something like that. Because that's going to just clog up all that fine detail that I have spent, you know, weeks uh, putting in, such as screws, rivets, panel lines, that kind of thing. That detail will just start to vanish. You want it crisp and clean. Okay, now that we have a couple of light coats of the PVA uh, on all the mold parts, um, I'm going to use a uh, heat gun and I'm going to move over the surface pretty quick. You don't want to focus that thing in one place for too long. It will burn the PVA. The reason I'm doing this is because in the summer it's usually about 75, 80 degrees in my shop. And I just let it uh, cure naturally, which takes about 5-10 minutes at the most. Right now it's winter time, it's 58 degrees in the shop. I'm in the desert, it's dry, and it's just uh, pretty cold. So I'm just going to help it along with this heat gun. You can choose not to, it doesn't matter. One thing you may have noticed is a couple of holes in the moulds themselves, like that one. That's actually uh, to help release the part once it's all cured and uh, you need to get it out. I've got some pretty deep drawers right now on this mould, particularly around where it's showing on the screen right now, uh, which is uh, the uh, cockpit canopy and the wing saddle. They're very deep. They need a little help to uh, release. So I just use a regular car tire valve, which I scrounged from the uh, tire shop down the street. 
and I just cut them flat, epoxy them to the outside of the mold, drill a hole and then cover with tape as you see here before I start epoxying. All right, before I uh, take everything outside and uh, put the primer on, I thought I'd show you the uh, tools that I use. Uh, so you've uh, got a chance. This is what I spray the PVA with. One of those, uh, what is it, $12, $15 Arbor Freight little uh, spray guns. Spray it at about 20 to 20 PSI. I mean, sorry, 20 to 25 PSI. And uh, it works good. First coat is always thin, as you can see I was doing. Then you lay it a little heavier as you go. This is what I'm actually going to use for the uh, primer today on the molds. Uh, I usually use just a regular auto primer, but this filler primer I have a ton of cans of, so uh, I'm going to use this today. This is the uh, PVA that I use from, uh, I think it's fiberglass, and uh, yeah, there we go, fiberglass supply depot. And this is what I use for the PVA, and it's reasonably priced, works great, never had a problem, used it for the last 12 years. We have the uh, molds all primed, and you can start to see where the detail is now. See, there's a uh, little screws in there. The parts which are blacked out like that, where there's not much coverage, those are going to be removed uh, after the, the molds are. Uh, I mean, the uh, parts are laid up and put together. So uh, there's no point keeping those. Those are the uh, formation lights. You can see your screws and things. The detail. This is a very difficult uh, layup because of all this detail. Everything has to have a what I call a splooge mix put in and uh, that's to fill any of the uh, small recesses and so forth like the screws the panel lines and so forth and uh, that should hopefully uh, create the mold the uh, finished product so there's no voids in it anyhow that's it for today this is part one of uh, laying up the fuselage and uh, next is part two, will be empennage and uh, putting the fuse together, you know, joining the two halves and so on and so forth. So come back and stick around. You could learn something because I always do and I watch everybody else's videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, part one. Please subscribe if you like it. Thank you.